Well, you look wonderful. Thank you, Andy. I think you look wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what does one have to do during the day but attend to one's beauty regimen? Well, I, you know, I actually, before our Zoom conference, I was imagining you would have really long hair and you would be like 30 pounds heavier. <laughs> so I'm very impressed. Well, a few days ago, I had really long hair. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm not 30 pounds heavier, but I am in the process of shedding some, some, COVID, some COVID poundage. It's true. And that's even with exercising and, and everything else. And I think it's mostly stress, lack of sleep, and, and just too much sitting around. I, I don't know about you, but that's, I've found those three things to have been extremely challenging. Through, through this whole thing. But um, we're here to talk about your recital from this summer, um, which was, I mean, they were all wonderful. Um, it, was, it was so moving what everybody did for this series. And they were, they were all completely different from each other, uh, except for the fact that every single one included Bach, which I think is telling. I'm not sure what it tells, but it tells us something about, about Bach or about our relationship to Bach. Um, what, do you have any thoughts on that? Why during this time in particular, did we all turn to JS? You, you know that question um, that people sometimes ask if you were stranded on an island all by yourself for an extended time, what would be the few items you would take with you. And um, for let's just say for reading, some people would say the complete volume of uh, Shakespeare plays or um, people, some people say the Bible. And um, it seems that a lot of us musicians would say, at least like if we're a violinist, we would say, well, let's take the Bach partitas and sonatas and um, or maybe if we can, if we're allowed to take extra scores, maybe Bach's complete volume, his all of his works, just period. <laughs> it it's, it's something that we can live with in isolation and feel like we we have culture, we have company. So yeah. it's, it's some sort of artistic nourishment. And it feels to me as if then we also have connection. It, 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 I don't know, it feels to me when playing or listening to Bach, especially in a time like this, that I'm, I'm hearing the voice of someone I, I love, someone who not only I love, but someone I feel I can trust. You know and what I mean? When you say someone, you mean you're talking about Bach the composer or the person who's playing it? Bach the, well, hopefully both, but yeah. always Bach the composer. Right. Yeah. I mean, now I'm my, so my husband uh, is working on some, uh, the lute suites, but for classical guitar. And it's so great to have that in the background when he's practicing. And, um, and also it's, it, when you're not running around, you feel like you have more time to just listen. Yeah. I mean, to yourself practicing, you're just, you don't just practice for, to accomplish something. You practice just for the, for the sake of listening. And, uh, and that's what better to do, to have that experience with than with Bach. Yeah. 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 To have that running through you as you're playing, to hear it, to feel it, to have it resonating. Uh, there's something, yeah, there's something really, um, consoling and, and of course, uplifting about it. Why did you choose the movement you did? Which by the way is, if maybe my single favorite movement from the whole set of all six sonatas and partitas, if I had to pick one, which of course I wouldn't do because that would be stupid. But if I, if I had to, it might be that one. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, that, that's how I feel. Um, it's so simple and I find that the partitas and sonatas 
for violin solo are quite complicated and they can sound just um, technical and challenging and, um, and and that they are at the they go to the edge of what the instrument is capable of doing and that movement is just like a like an aria mm -hmm. And I, I've always been a little bit jealous of the of cellists who get to do the cello suites that they kind of just breathe freely yeah. in comparison with the gnarliness and the intricacies of the of the partitas and sonatas for the violin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's nothing, of course. Were there a cellist here? If I could, if I could find a cellist to join this conversation. Um, she might have something to say about this, but there's no question, but that those pieces don't push at the, you know, the edge of the known universe for the instrument in the way that the violin pieces still do. Right. You know, after 300 plus years of, um, you know, the expansion of what we think of as being possible on the violin, then one thing I loved again about every program was that they were very different and they were that each one was quite personal. Yours to me seemed particularly so, um, both in the pieces you chose, the length of the pieces, the juxtaposition of one piece to another. Um, and of course, in the fact that you ended uh, with the duet with, with Rami, which uh, is personal on multiple levels. Um, and was, you know, utterly unique in the, the, the trajectory of the summer as a whole. You know, nobody else programmed anything remotely like this. Um, can you talk about that? How, how you came to that together? Because you, you created that, um, it's not an arrangement, it's a, it's a, a composing out of, of the tune Alvinu Malkenu. How did you how did you come to that? How did we come to arrange that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so Rami and I wanted to, well, first of all, we want to play together because we were married and we like each other. And, <laughs> and, um, uh, so, and there is, there's quite a bit of repertoire for the violin and guitar, but, uh, Rami composes a lot of songs and um, and so we've arranged songs that he's composed and turned them into pieces for, I mean, we basically co-composed pieces based on little parts of uh, other songs that he's written. And, uh, but with, uh, and every piece that we've composed so far is dedicated to one of our teachers. And um, and this piece was dedicated to a teacher who's like, who, who is two pieces that we wrote were dedicated to people that were both related to in some way that were both of our teachers. Um, one piece um, was written for his parents, um, it's called mom and dad, but it's partly because they were my teachers, uh, they were violin, violin teachers. And, um, and this piece is our rabbi, who a rabbi is a teacher. And, um, and that's why this piece is called David. And, um, and we made it uh, based on Avino Malkeno on, the, on that tune from this prayer, because uh, Rami just, loves this tune more than any other tune that he's ever, ever heard. And, um, and me too. I mean, I, I, I adore it. And, uh, and, and I don't remember ever not knowing it. Um, but what's nice about it for, as an arrangement is that it kind of, uh, not just as an arrangement, it, the, the, the prayer itself, I feel that it uh, captures the the entire world like the jew in diaspora so you, there's a spanish flavor to it um and that whole part of the world um middle eastern flavor and 
Um, and it's also uh, so intimate and it's also so <laughs> overt. It, it just, it has everything in it. So I just think that it should just be arranged and played, just like Bach. You Bach, you can play in any and on any pretty much any work of Bach. I feel like you can play on any instrument, and um, and uh, so something about this tune is it just can be celebrated anyway, and it will feel good. Yeah, I've always heard and really love um, this sense of mystery in in the tune. It, yeah. it feels deep to me right. um and there is the the kind of the somewhat spanish element but that's also a a pretty common hebraic element or just middle eastern element in general but something about the juxtaposition of that with the really strong f major or at least i hear it as being an f major um as long as it being in three right it's almost like a waltz yes and, which is so like who knew and um and it also it's a waltz but it's also like ecstatic yes well yeah. I guess waltzes can be ecstatic i mean it they it was illegal they, they made waltzes illegal because you would twirl around and it would make you feel things that maybe you weren't allowed to feel exactly and act on those things oh yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's i think that's it um because I've always loved the tune also for as long as I've known it. Um, and, and again, more than, than just about any other of its kind. Right. You know, it's so suitable for you to say that it's, it has a sense of mystery because it, the, the words Avinu Malkeinu mean my father, my king, and um, all year long, you ne I mean, there you don't refer to it, Jewish people don't refer to God as the father that except for this once I mean I'm not I don't I'm not an expert but I don't know of any place where we talk about him like our father and and just in this one song at one tune prayer and um, and so when so we do it a little bit with with that caution you know with or like mystery or um, like wonder. <laughs> yeah. So going from the Bach to David, um, you know, anybody who who experiences this performance, I think, uh, has a comes into a very intimate relationship with you and Rami, an intimate musical expressive relationship that is there's there's no fourth wall between you all and and us even online even watching you know on a, on a streamed video premiere it's it's extremely direct and it feels as if you've brought us into your space in a way that's that's very special um the spring was was hard on on you on you guys and and your experience of the pandemic has been um it feels almost biblical, right? To stay with the, what we've just been talking about. It certainly far surpasses um, the direct experience of COVID uh, of, of anyone else I know. Um, did that inform your approach to the recital at all? It, it, was there, I don't know, an interest in doing away with um, the sort of typical trappings of a violin recital and just offering something intimate and direct and simple? It probably everything influences our, uh, our music or our art <clears throat> and maybe your uh, audience, maybe they don't all know that I live in New Rochelle when New Rochelle was the epicenter of coronavirus. <coughs> Um, and, um, and as you know, uh, our neighbor died, I mean, very early in the pandemic, our neighbor died and most of our neighbors were sick <clears throat> and, um, and our aunt died and actually, 
we we played this arrangement at our aunt's uh, funeral and of course a funeral in the pandemic for is uh is an is a very uh, funerals are are of course always sad but in the pandemic it, it just felt like we were in an alternate universe um where you can't even be close with the people who are grief with other people who are grieving and um so yeah it, it i mean everything influences everything and we can't we can't separate um yeah i i guess i i haven't felt like playing any like showy uh, music or just like fun now i'm working on some veracini like yeah it's just, right right <laughs> So, uh, and I'm, and we're, we're doing okay. And, um, and I'm now I'm up now, if you wanted me to play recital, I'd be up for anything. He's, are you, you're friends with the composer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe you could tell me a little about him. You know, at the time we were not communicating with, uh, normally I would call you up and say, oh, so you're friends with him. What's he like? What's his, you know, and, I looked him up a little bit. I didn't know him before you introduced me to his music by asking me to play this piece. And, um, and also, you know, normally with a living composer, we, we reach out, right? We're like, oh, and I did have a question about the score, but I, we were so in our little cave. Oh yeah. Um, and also for, uh, for a few months, we, um, we went to a different house. Uh, to get away from New Rochelle, and uh, and we we didn't even have very much connection, so our kids couldn't even do uh, remote schooling. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, so and I wasn't in touch with you, but um, I was wondering if if you could share anything about your your how you know David. I'm not exactly certain when we met, but we we became um, good friends. Uh, back in 97, I think, um, at a music festival in Maine that I co-directed at the time, a, a new music festival, American music festival, uh, called Seal Bay Festival, which is still going um, on an island off the coast of Maine. Mm. And uh, this piece that you played um, is also uh, to some extent born out of grief uh, because at the time that uh, we were there together at Seal Bay, David had just lost his wife, the violinist Catherine Tate, um, after a, a very long, difficult illness. Um, and a couple years before that, uh, or a year before that, um, I'd lost a very dear friend and both in uh, a cellist and both of these women had had died much too young of, of cancer. And so this is one of the things that uh, that David and I uh, really bonded over over the course of the festival. Uh, and sometime after the festival, he knew that I I was doing a lot of playing then I would play at the festival and I was doing the occasional recital and and there was a, a program I was taking around the Northeast to colleges a bit that was uh, a mix of new music and, and some early music. But he knew I was doing this. And so he surprised me with this piece that he, that he wrote for me called Star Points that uh, he said came out of a conversation we had had late one night sitting on rocks right on the, the main coast, looking up at this incredible canopy of stars. Um, uh, and, it, and I remembered, you know, exactly the conversation he was talking about and how uh, powerful and, and, and magical that was. Um, and so I felt a really strong connection to the piece. Um, and he knew my playing well enough too to make the piece um, interesting and fun to play and, and beautiful without making it too hard. So <laughs> um, so I played the piece quite a lot for a, a few years. Um, mm. I haven't played it in a while and it just suddenly hit me that I just thought it would be perfect 
for for this past summer and that that you were the one for the job so so did it sound so how did, how is it different the way i play it than the way that you that you play it did well it sounds better <laughs> aside from that it um that's a really good question um I play it, I think I played it a little bit uh, slower and I much more non vibrato. I think all the, the, the sort of stinging harmonic attacks, I was thinking, I was trying to get this, uh, what I thought of as this star sound. Mm -hmm. um, but in doing that, I also always felt uh, that what I was doing was somewhat labored. And, and so I struggled with that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't struggle with the piece so much. I struggled with my conception of the piece and how I was trying to pull it off. And your performance felt much more natural and had more of an, an arc. Uh, and, and I felt like the starriness of it came out more and more as you went. And toward the end, when there are so many of those harmonics, uh, mm -hmm. it really, it became very starry. Okay. Well, you see, I should have talked to you because now that I know that grief comes into play here with in that piece, I probably would have taken his metronome marking at the end a little more seriously. He, he ah, yeah. indicated that it should be quite slow. And, um, and I was being it was more because of logistics. I was thinking, oh, they're harmonics and very long. And I, I was afraid also on a recording, I would lose the audience <laughs> if I really played it as slowly as he indicated. So um, I, I don't know, maybe I, could, maybe I would have done something a little bit differently with the end. Well, we could ask you to play it again this summer so that people could, ask, if, if, we can, if we can actually be together Mm -hmm. um, that would be fun. I know he would love that because he loved your performance. That means a lot to me. Uh, so now I know that his previous partner was a woman, was a violinist, yeah. and, um, and that his partner now is a violinist. Because yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So um, there yeah. is. It's just like if I were a cellist and you were writing for me, ooh, I would. I would just be thinking about Carrie all the time. <laughs> Because you, because you can't help but have her sound in your in your head, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, um, so maybe it's good I didn't talk to him before the performance because uh, it's it is you what know, it is.